The Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust acquired the house in 1996 from the Daughters of the American Revolution Molly Varnum chapter. They had held the house for about 100 years and uh, they had quite a collection of uh, items and the house came with 900 artifacts. Uh, there were a few boxes of textiles uh, that we hadn't really inventoried very thoroughly and um, unfortunately we have Kathy Herbert here who used to work at the Textile Museum who's now one of our environmental educators and with her strong interest in textiles and education and rivers and the environment uh, we thought it would be really fun to feature um, some underclothing that we found uh, in the collection and to feature it to tell a little bit of a story. You're in the, you're in the bedroom of the house and this is where we like to tell the history of the environmental impact of decisions that we make. Uh, so that's, do you want to talk about maybe individual pieces? I could talk about the individual pieces, yes. So of course textiles historically have used a lot of water power. All right, from the early days right up to now. So we, um, one of the other uh, staff from the Textile Museum, we started getting into these boxes and we said, wouldn't this be fun for Valentine's Day to have an underwear theme? So we see uh, this particular item, 1880 cotton. Everything was cotton and wool in the early days or linen. And the underpants here, which were called, one lady that came in called them knickers, and I, I thought, you know, I said that was really neat, and notice the crotch, because of the outdoor plumbing. Till they had the indoor, around. till they had the indoor plumbing, there was, this was crotchless. So, but you notice the, the ribbon, and notice all the, the fancy, I always thought they were just bloomers, but they, somebody did walk in and say, no, they're, oh, look at the knickers. So this is the, the period 1880. Moving along, this particular piece is 1900, and this would be a petticoat. And I think you could see a petticoat, what you would wear really was your shift, and then you'd wear your corset, and then you'd wear your petticoat. You'd wear your, um, you'd have these overgarments, what did you call the corset covers over that, and then you'd have your top, your dress, whatever you're gonna have over, so, and if it was real cold, you might wear multiple petticoats on today. So notice how pretty this is. This probably had a beautiful yellow top to match it. And it has some writing on it there. Uh, this piece, these two pieces over here are corset covers and cotton, cot, another cot, cotton one with mother of pearl buttons, but notice the work that somebody embroidered, and notice the lacing that is that was done. So this corset would be higher than this one because this one would be tucked into the petticoat. Now this one right here, we're up to 1905 because you have 1870, 1905. This one epitomizes the changes in undergarments for the Edwardian era. During Victorian times, they loved the silk. So you can see this piece right here would be a cover. Um, what's really, really neat, when Paula was looking through this, she used the word Gibson girl look. It's the hourglass look, and the front would sort of bosom out. They called it a mono bosom, and it would, it would, come, would come out. And then the hourglass figure would come down and go up. And that little tiny waist on that yellow. Tiny, tiny waist. And of course, many of these things that survived that were tiny, tiny waist, the curator of the museum used to say, because they were hardly worn. Now, notice this, too, this is called a bum roll. So this would be wearing on the back. I mean, we really don't want this, you know, in our bums now. But, I mean, this would be a bum roll, and it would jet out. Your, your skirt would jet out, or your petticoat would jet out. And then another time would be the, um, the hoop. God forbid you sit down, the hoop, you have to sit down and then the hoop would come flying up. So this is a bum roll. Um, and then we have the beautiful corpse combs over here, the tortoise shell combs. And I don't have a picture, I'd like to get a picture of the women wearing those in their hair. Uh, this one is not tortoise shell. And of course this is an endangered species today um, with this, this tortoise. So um, you could just picture, you know, the woman all dressed up, and of course this was something the fair lady would be doing, is the samplers. 
And we have a great picture right here of how Mass Audubon really started because of the fashion was killing the birds for the feathers. For hats. For hats. Who's going to have the beautiful hat, the nicest looking hat? And look at this meeting. This is the time period, 1912, Washington, D.C. This is the gathering of the Daughters of the American Revolution ladies. Yep. So um, that dusty. is really Do you want to do another picture with less dust? This is kind of gross.